Good morning, my name is Sarah Kay. I've been an esthetician for almost 13 years um, in medical aesthetics. And so I'm going to share with you um, exactly what I have found has been one of the best treatments. Um, it's one of the most gentle treatments on the skin. So I'm gonna do it to myself, but actually while I'm doing it, I'm going to share with you something that you could be doing at home. So this is a treatment that you could ask for in office. And so what you would ask for is a dermaplane with um, a chemical peel. Um, what I'm using is a PCA peel and I'm just gonna do one coat. Um, in fact, I'm not even gonna put all the extra layers on there that the protocol asks for. And the reason for that is I don't want excessive flaking and peeling. In fact, this particular peel is only gonna cause a little flaking if it's necessary. Mostly, I just want um, my skin to be really well exfoliated and help with some pigment. So I spent some time in the sun and now I have melasma flaring, so I'm going to use a peel with a little hydroquinone. Um, I do want to let you know that as I'm going through this, I'm gonna give you an at-home version. Keep in mind, just like anything, um, this is just if you need to pinch pennies or you just, this isn't in your budget, um, I wanna give you another option. So everybody should have healthy, happy skin. I think everybody deserves to because when our skin looks good, we're just more confident and more comfortable in our own skin. Um, sometimes we deal with skin issues and the culprit is hard to find. A lot of times it has to do with internal stuff. So. Um, if you are dealing with some major stuff, see a doc, um, you know, see, see a medical doctor and, and also see maybe somebody holistic and get both versions and do it all, do everything. Uh, when I'm dealing with some skin issues, I hit it from every angle. I find that's most effective. So anyway, to, with that, with all of that info, let's, let's this, get this going. So I'm gonna pull my hair back a little bit and I'm doing a dermaplane on myself. And I, um, this might be really awkward. I might have this sped up, but what I do want to tell you is this is what everybody's doing as far as like hair removal on the face. Everybody thinks that they don't need to have peach fuzz. Listen, um, everybody has peach fuzz. You don't need to do this, but if you are somebody that really enjoys doing makeup, if you're younger, I know a lot of teenagers are now getting into shaving their face. Here's what I wanna tell you about it. If you're going to remove the hair on your face, make sure that you are using like a clean razor that's brand new, maybe even a disposable, something like that. A facial razor is going to be the best option and they even have new um, like little machines where you can remove the hair without affecting the skin. What I'm about to do is going to remove the hair and the dead skin cells. So at home, you would actually want to exfoliate with a scrub cleanse your skin, exfoliate with a scrub, and then take alcohol. And now that's where I'm going to join you. Take alcohol on a cotton ball or whatever piece of gauze you might have and swipe all of your skin. Here's why. You do not want to move bacteria. Hair follicles carry a lot of bacteria around them. And it's why sometimes people get ingrown hairs. It's why you can break out just you know, when you shave and stuff. So this will help tremendously. Now, a little side note, if you have a ton of active blemishes, this treatment's not for you. It will actually spread the bacteria and make it um, so much worse than where you started off. Going to an office and having just an in-office chemical peel and maybe some extractions is going to be your best treatment. So for those of you who are not dealing with skin issues, um, tune in check this out and if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do it means the world to me um so that being said i'm out of gloves i'm gonna need another glove box so even when i work on my own skin i use gloves and the reason for that is um well there's a lot of reasons but the biggest reason is that i don't want to move I don't want the oils from my hands on my skin. I am super breakout prone. I have super tricky skin. Everything makes it angry, almost. So if something agrees with my skin, I know that most anybody I hand it off to is gonna love it. So I always start with like things that my skin can handle when suggesting products, unless somebody has the opposite type of skin than, um, that I have. So anyway, um, I am going to start with a dermaplane blade. 
this is the part where you would shave your face. Um, some people avoid their forehead because they're like, I don't have any peach fuzz up there. So, you know, you're gonna do what works best for you. What I would not suggest if you're going to be doing this at home facial is don't use Nair on your face because it is a chemical that causes that to go away, unless that's all you're doing. If you're just Nairing your face, then do that and be done. But be really careful, and I'm just gonna start. Um, you wanna be extra super careful. I don't think I can do two things at once. So I'm gonna start this, I'm gonna have this sped up, and then we'll talk on the next step. So you can take a hold of a razor and get to it. Okay, so um, I'm not done quite yet, but I wanted to mention, I do get breakouts. So I have a couple breakouts over here, and now that I've gone over them, I wanna switch blades. So if you just have a little blemish, wait and go over that area last, okay? So that you don't waste your razor, whatever you're using, okay? I'm gonna finish up and then check right back in with you. Okay, so I'm done with my face. Next up, I just want to kind of blend any hair from my jawline that feeds into my neck. Don't get too aggressive because especially when you spend time outside, it's easy to cover your face and protect it. It's not easy to cover and protect your neck or your chest. So throughout the year, in the warmer, sunnier months, I do not mess with my client's neck or chest area or really the body um, for that reason. Um, so keep that in mind, but I'm going to run it down. You want it to blend. You want it to be flawless so that when you go to put your makeup on, if that's something that you do, everything blends perfectly. If you're somebody that wants to take care of your skin so you don't, because you don't want to wear makeup, then you're going to love this. But the same thing, if the light catches, you don't want a line, like a line of demarcation where the hair grows and then where it doesn't. So I like to blend it um, and you might want to do the same. Oh, also, they have mirrors that light up, and that's gonna be your best option because lighting is key. I have a magnifying light on me, and then when I do these treatments in office on my clients, I actually use a surgery light. So, and I look at them from the side, and it's just like looking in your rear view mirror and catching a glimpse and gasping. We all do it, I do it, and um, I'm just telling you that the better your lighting, the better treatment you're going to give yourself the better treatment you'll get in office if whoever's working on you has great lighting. It makes all the difference, and they will. Everybody has, every esthetician has a magnifying lamp, so. I had a client once say, um, she's like, are you just shaving my face? And I said, no, that's something you can do at home on your own. I said, what I'm doing is removing the dead skin cells as well. So since you're probably going to do a version of this on your own, um, you're only getting the hair removed, you know? So because of that, um, you wanted to do that scrub before. So you cleanse, then you scrub, then you're going to, you know, do the alcohol. That's super important. And then you're gonna remove the hair. After you do that, if you're young, so young would be a teenager, your skin cells turn over really fast. So you're going to want to apply an enzyme. 
an enzyme is going to just um, melt away the dead skin. Now it's gonna sting a little bit. Make sure you are not sensitive to it by using it on a little patch of your skin. Make sure that you tolerate it before you put it on your entire face. Maybe put it there, let it sit for 10 minutes. Make sure that's something that you wanna put on your whole face. Cause I will tell you when I go to put the peel on my face, I kind of bounce around. It's very hot, it's very fiery, but only for a couple of minutes and then the, that subsides. Um, if you're older and you have like a glycolic lactic cream or you have a, I don't want you to use retinol I don't use retinol after treatments but like a glycolic lactic cream is gonna be your best option and let me think um, Skin Medica makes an alpha high and uh, aha baha one, so that's alpha hydroxys, beta hydroxys, and then my favorite one is Zio, and theirs is called Exfoliating Accelerator. So that's also glycolic and lactic acid. You can put that cream on, and then you're done. Now. I'm not done, I'm gonna wax my lip. You obviously saw I didn't go over my lip. I'm gonna wax my brows. If you're younger, I want you to pay attention because I did get a hold of the wax pot when I was 11 years old <laughs> and I overdid it. And I got a hold of tweezers and I found them and you know went to town. So I have had stories of people who come in and say, you know, once I got over waxed, my hair never grew back. So for those of you who are young that have these amazing, beautiful eyebrows, um, I want to show you how to do it the right way. Uh, somebody has to show you, so I'm going to do it. And um, if you can, go see Heidi Eaton. I think she's even overbooked now, but um, she's over at Wax and Honey if you're in Kansas City. And um, Sally Benson, and I'm just trying to think, she has a new last name now, but if you can find her, she's at a solo salon. She's amazing at eyebrows as well. So. Um, find somebody who specializes in eyebrows while you're young. Don't just go anywhere for eyebrows. Um, <clears throat> I am totally convinced that three things that will make you feel really good about yourself are good eyebrows, getting great lashes, so whether you you know have them put on or you use Latisse or just have an awesome mascara, and then um, taking time to do your hair once in a blue moon. Those three things just make you feel like uh, like you self-care, like you took care of yourself, and they're not super hard to do. So keep that in mind if you have a little extra time. If you're a new mom, you don't. All right, waxing brows. I'm gonna show you the at-home version. Um, this is my in-office version, but at home, you're gonna wanna use a little moisturizer on the areas that you are waxing. And the reason for that is this creates a barrier. You want a barrier so the wax doesn't overly adhere to the skin and cause tearing. You also do not wanna go over any areas twice, only once. So if you don't get the hair, you have to come back with tweezers. So for estheticians out there who are newer, um, any esthetician who's been doing it for a while learns that with experience. So um, that is something that I'm sharing with you. A lot of teenagers, a lot of people use retinol um, I'm putting moisturizer on my lips because I like to run the wax over my lip line to make sure I get every tiny hair. All right, this is going to be sped up, but next I'm going to trim my brows and then I'm going to wax them. Okay, so this is important. Don't double dip your stick, and if you have sensitive skin, you don't want your wax too hot. You just want it warm enough to be able to work with. Um, everybody's preference on this is different, but I'm just saying if you're at home, because that's the other way that you can cause huge problems, is double dipping can move bacteria, especially if your wax is not super hot, but also, honestly, you should just go see a professional, but if you're not going to, then I wanna show you how to do it the right way. Okay, so the middle is done. If I have any hair left there, I'm coming back with tweezers. Notice how I left, oh, I wish you could see, but I can't get close enough. I left, if anything, leave more. You wanna create the illusion that your brows are full and manicured. And the way that you do that is you're not going to go after every single hair. You actually um, want to step about a foot away from the mirror, look at yourself and see how that, how that looks. Um, because when you overdo it, I like to wax the top because I could have three eyebrows if, if I were allowed. Um, 
So I stay away from my line, but I make sure that I just don't have a lot of hair floating around. Hold the skin taut and then pull the opposite direction quickly. Do not take your sweet time. There we go. If you're plucking, same thing, like stay away because you're so close when you're looking at yourself. And so you pluck, 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 and then you step away and you're like, where did my eyebrow go? Um, <clears throat> most teenagers accidentally do that. So now I'm going into my arch. And I would say these days, this will help open up your eye. I've mentioned this before when filling in your brows, but ideally you want the front of your brow, brow to at least start at your tear duct. Now, if you can move it in more, if you want to, if you want your brow to be longer, which I would suggest anybody to do if you can. Um, and then you want the tail to come down as far as it will. I mean, cause that just creates a really long brow. If you look at yourself, they say that your arch should be, I think outside your iris. Yes, outside your iris but I find that that's where it should almost not peak. Like it should just keep going if you have a long brow. If you don't have a long brow, then that's gonna be it for you. You can use, and I've mentioned it before, you can massage your eyebrows with castor oil and that will actually help them grow. I've seen it work. I'm not just saying that, like I read it somewhere. Like my sister-in-law used to have tiny little bitty brows and they were very short and she has good eyebrows now. I mean, she has the best eyebrows that she could do with what, you know, with what she's working for, with. So um, they look really nice. Okay, I'm just picking up extra wax. Now, my eyebrows have some blonde. Some people's have some gray. And because of that, you can't see everything there. So I usually fill them in. But something else that I really like to do is tint them. When I tent them, it, it, it's kind of a quick fix. Like I like it when I'm going to the lake or on vacation because it's just something, then I don't have to like take an extra step. When I'm doing my makeup, I can skip the step of filling in my brows. It's nice. Um, your other option would be microblading. There's a video about that um, where I fill you in on all the details. So just scroll down and check it out. If that's something you're interested in and microblading is, I'm gonna call it semi-permanent makeup. It's permanent makeup, but it fades out over time. And, um, Tina Birch is amazing at that, but I have a friend, her name's Jessica Norton, and she's doing it, and honestly, I would trust her with anything. She's just very, very good at everything. <laughs> everything aesthetics. Okay. So, eyebrows are cleaned up, and next I'm gonna clean up around my lips. I don't wait until things look really bad. The idea is that you would just mark on your calendar when you give yourself the treatment and write when it's schedule yourself in to your own day, just like you schedule everybody else into your day. Schedule yourself. Self-care is one of the most important things. If you can fill your cup, then you have something hopefully to give. done waxing. I do use something called Finapil after I wax everybody and myself. It is the only thing that I think works to keep from breaking out after waxing. So if you've had a bad experience, there are a lot of ways to avoid that. Um, I had a lot of bad experiences and so that's how I found this way to wax. And so, like I said, if you're a newer esthetician, I hope this is helpful for you. If you are always somebody who just does your own stuff at home, like I used to do, um, I hope this is super, super helpful for you. Click like if it is. Um, next up, eye cream. So I'm putting eye cream on to protect around my orbital bone. When you use chemicals or enzymes or all those things, they migrate. And so you really wanna protect around the orbital bone so that they don't migrate where you just waxed in just that sensitive area and I'm pressing the eye cream into my skin. I don't wanna rub right now. All right, 
eye cream. I've got my lip stuff on. And like I said, I'm using a peel. So this is a PCA peel with hydroquinone. You could be using an at-home enzyme or you could be using an at-home um, exfoliator. I, Like I said, I don't like retinol after these treatments. It can be too aggressive. The reason for that is that you have exfoliated off your barrier. And so now whatever you're using is gonna drop down really deep in the pores. It's awesome for all your anti-aging products because they're gonna penetrate deeper. There's nothing on the surface blocking them. Um, but on another level, if you're using a strong product already, a pharmaceutical grade product, then it could cause a chemical burn. So please, please be careful. That's why I'm telling you an enzyme or just one of those light creams is something you could use at home um, to just kind of kill bacteria. It's gonna tighten the pores, give your skin a healthy glow, and maybe that just gets you by. Maybe you go in office, you know, a, a, you're, you spread them out. You spread them out um, six weeks and every three weeks you feel you need a treatment, you could be doing that intermittently at home. So, you know, or you can't get in for some reason or another. Again, um, budgets are different. I believe everybody can afford almost anything depending on how they budget their life. So um, this, I'm just trying to give you lots of tools. So next up, I'm taking a piece of gauze. You would not have access to any of these peels at home, but I'm telling you what I'm using in case another girl who does skin is watching because this is one of my favorite combos. This is gonna sting a lot. Here we go. But you're going to notice that really after this, I could technically put makeup on and go on with my day, which is exactly what I'm gonna do because I am working today. I will be working. Um, seeing patients here pretty soon. Now in office, oftentimes on the nose, um, I microderm it to get all of the dead skin off, but because I was trying to give you an at-home treatment, I didn't want to do that. Um, I also do extractions after the exfoliation before the peel. So I do extractions, I do the wax, and then I put the peel on top. I'm gonna neutralize it and put sunscreen on, and that's it. So I am using to neutralize, I've mentioned this before, but it's Clinicom. Um, and this is nice because it does have a touch of hydrocortisone, which just calms and soothes your skin. And it's nice to use a day or two after a treatment. So I'm putting this on. And this is what I do on myself. I try to do it every four weeks, and here's why. I was doing these treatments on people for years, so many years, like five, six years. Um, I didn't start dermaplaning until like my fourth year in aesthetics. Um, so yeah, like five or six years and I'm like, everybody looks better, everybody looks younger, their skin always looks healthy, their makeup looks flawless and it's because their skin is healthy. And these were my clients that were coming in religiously every four weeks. So I thought to myself, I'm gonna take time and stay late or come in early and do this to myself. So that's what I've done um, since having kids for the last probably four years. Um, and I've never had people comment on my skin until probably the last four years. So this is what I'm doing. And um, I'm doing other stuff too, and I'm gonna fill you in on all of that. But tune in every Wednesday, and I will continue to share and hopefully help give you tools so that you can take care of yourself too, and then maybe teach the next generation so we can all just feel good about ourselves in this crazy world that we are surviving in. All right, I'll see ya.